Hello, you absolute legends. It seems like with each passing year, GoldenEye players ask the question, how much lower can we go? How many more records can realistically be broken? Many people have speculated on the seemingly impending heat death of the game, where speedruns are so optimized that they simply can't be beaten. The main reason for this speculation is the fact that GoldenEye records are counted to the full second. So as times get better, it becomes exponentially more difficult to take an entire second off. As records become seemingly maxed, this won't change the way records are timed, however, and there is a very good reason for this which I will cover later in the video. In any case, it seems like this speedrunning dead end might not be as close as some might think, as the records continue to flow at a pretty consistent rate. In 2019, there have been 13 new world records set, with each new record getting increasingly more insane. In this video, I will cover three incredible world records that were achieved recently, and we will take a look at some of the optimizations that made them possible. One of them involves a completely different strategy that was conceived years ago, but mysteriously was not seriously considered or attempted until now. So sit back and relax as we take a look at some of GoldenEye's amazing new records. On the 1st of September, Rayan Isran achieved 51 seconds on Facility Secret Agent. This run is extremely optimized, and it's a time that Rayan first started to play for all the way back in 2013. The thing that makes Facility such a grind are the two major luck factors that will make or break the run. The first is the location of Dr. Doak. In order to attain the record, he needs to be in one of seven possible locations. This means that 6 out of 7 runs have literally no chance of being successful, but we can't know that until we get through most of the level. Doak's location is decided as soon as we leave the vents at the very start. It would be nice to know where he was as soon as he spawns, but unfortunately there is no way of finding out until you reach his optimal location. The second roadblock is the location of Trevelyan when you enter the final bottling room. Upon entering the room, there are different paths he can take. He can move forwards between the tanks, he can turn left and walk away, or he can turn around and face the stairs. The last option is what we need. If he has turned around, he will start the conversation as soon as we reach the bottom of the stairs. If he has his back to us, this means we have to run all the way around into his field of vision before talking. If he doesn't turn to face the stairs, we lose almost an entire second. The odds of Trevelyan being in the best location is approximately 1 in 5. So combined with the luck we need from Dr. Doak, this leaves us with approximately a 1 in 35 chance of getting everything in place in order to even have a chance. When you combine this with the fact that Facility is a very technical level that needs extremely good control, this turns out to be one of the most difficult records to achieve. Whenever you have a time that is both technically challenging and heavily reliant on luck factors, you end up with a record that is extremely strong. Ryan got especially unlucky over the years totaling at least 25 runs that ended in a time of 52, with what we call a bad Trev. This is where Trevelyan was not in the ideal location, therefore losing a second. Having 25 of these types of runs that would likely have been 51 with a good Trev is so unlucky, but thankfully he continued to grind and finally everything came together. On the 2nd of October, Rayan Isran achieved a run of 42 seconds on Bunker 2 Secret Agent. This broke the previous record by 2 seconds, which was set all the way back in 2010. The really interesting thing about this record is that it utilized a strategy that was proposed years ago, but no one ever decided to seriously try to implement it. The old strategy, which has been used since almost the dawn of time, involved immediately going after a clipboard that is carried by a guard deep into the level. This is needed to satisfy one of the objectives, but in 2016, Henrik Norgren devised a strategy that would involve luring the guard out using the sound from the bursts of a KF-7. This isn't as simple as it seems though, and there is a fair amount of luck involved in having the guard that holds the clipboard to actually run to the area we need him to. When I asked Rayan how often the guard was in the correct location, he advised that he was around once every 30 minutes. Honestly, that isn't that bad especially when you compare it to some other levels that require grinds of tens of hours just to have a single chance of getting the record. This was likely a case where the idea of the strategy was much worse than it really was in practice. This does happen sometimes, and when the level is finally cracked, you see an avalanche of players replicating the strategy with success. 
The run of 42 seconds was definitely good, but Rayan has had potential runs that were a couple of seconds faster. Though it is difficult to execute the objective of destroying all of the security cameras while still keeping a fast pace. Usually, runs will miss a camera or two, as they are extremely small targets and the spread of the KF-7 makes a significant impact on how accurate you can realistically be. Now that this strategy has been exposed as practical, this record likely isn't destined to stay where it is for too long. And Rayan suggests the record could be lowered down to 41, or even 40 seconds eventually. On the 11th of October, Rayan also achieved a time of 3 minutes and 55 seconds on Control Agent. Evidently, Rayan has been on somewhat of a tear lately. The previous record of 3 minutes and 56 seconds was set back in 2014. This run is really, really good, and utilized a bunch of small optimizations. Some of these included switching weapons to warp the very first elevator door, using two mind boosts after the crate room. The timing for this is insanely tight. He took advantage of a relatively new improvement of shooting Natalia as she turns to use the computer when starting the long protect sequence. The previous strategy did involve shooting her repeatedly to back her up. This is helpful because after the protect sequence, we basically have to wait for her to run to the elevator we started the level in. So even though we technically could end the level earlier, we usually have to stand around and wait for her to do her thing. From the point that Natalia turns to run up the stairs here, she takes just under 18 seconds to get to the elevator to complete the objective. Shooting her as she turns to the computer means that her angle is better when backing her up, which means that she will be closer to the stairs when she finishes. Even though the level is 4 minutes long, most of that time is spent waiting for Natalia to disable the GoldenEye satellite and open doors. Realistically, there is only approximately 25 seconds of real speedrunning. The first 5 seconds of the stage is critical, where we need to kill every guard as quickly as possible. We then spend 35 seconds waiting for Natalia to unlock the door. From here, the next 20 seconds is where most of the speedrunning lies. We need to get to the other side of the door Natalia is working on as soon as possible. However, once Natalia has been alerted, the rest of the level is basically an auto-scroller, and aside from the minor optimizations we spoke of earlier, there really isn't much we can do to speed this up. Still, just because there isn't a lot of time spent influencing the eventual outcome, that doesn't mean it's any easier, and 355 is still incredibly difficult. On the 15th of October, Daniel Coelho achieved 1 minute and 12 seconds on Cavan's Secret Agent. This beat the previous record by 1 second, which was achieved back in 2014. Cavan's Secret Agent contains one of the more difficult and annoying tricks we use in GoldenEye speedrunning. I explained it in more detail in my Top 5 Hardest Tricks video. But in short, you need to perform an extremely precise mind throw while dealing with a terrible frame rate. If done correctly, the mine will go through the ceiling and into the adjacent room, destroying the computers and completing one of the objectives. But the thing that stands out to me about this run is the fact that Daniel uses the 2.x control style, which forces you to have to physically hold and play with two controllers. Trust me when I say this control scheme is much, much harder than using one controller, and Caverns isn't exactly the simplest level, so it takes a lot of skill to be able to pull this off well. Using 2.x allows you to open the elevator door just before you start the level, and enables you to start with full speed. The run had a lot going for it, and it was particularly lucky. It only had a single back boost which is very rare for this level. Honestly, this run could, or even really should have been 111, if not for a weird boost before the very final elevator that forced Daniel into the pole, causing him to get stuck. Getting shot in this area isn't terribly uncommon due to the sheer amount of guards, but it's definitely pretty unlucky to actually get stuck here. At the start of the video, I mentioned that I would address why GoldenEye will never use real-time instead of in-game time for measuring records. I understand that on the surface, you'd think that measuring in real-time would solve a lot of the assumed problems that timing to the full second seems to bring up. Mainly, that eventually it's impossible to improve times, and also the fact that many people can hold the same record. However, there is a core mechanic of GoldenEye that really stops this idea in its tracks. Basically, if we were to time in real time, it would all come down to luck. Within the rules and boundaries of the game, GoldenEye is pretty consistent. You can do the same movements and get the same outcome almost every time. 
but if you were to time each of these runs in real time, the outcome would differ greatly. Honestly, I don't fully understand the technical details of why this happens, but I can give you a practical example. Here are two runs of Dam Agent, both starting at the exact same time. Both of these runs are also using a game shark that shows the in-game timer on screen. When I was going for Dam 52, I used to compare a lot of runs to try and find any optimization I could. The only thing I could do at the time was put two runs together like you're seeing right now and compare them in real time. But what I eventually realized was that the runs just never made sense. Runs that I knew were bad were sometimes quicker in real time than runs that were great, but there was no method to it at all and it seemed completely random. In this example run, you can see that the run on the left is much faster in real time, but is much slower in in-game time. So the end screen would have been a second slower, even though it was actually faster. But this isn't always the case and you can literally never know how fast a run is until you measure it in real time. Practically, this would mean you would need to individually time every single run you ever did using software, because the time the game provides would not be an indication of how fast the run actually was. Furthermore, given that it all comes down to luck, it would remove a lot of the skill that is needed to get these records. While the in-game timer does only round to the full second, at the very least it's extremely consistent. Your actions in the game affect the in-game timer much more directly than they affect real time, so it's a much better indication of how you actually played the level. If you want some more technical information I'll put a link to a post that describes how the game calculates the in-game timer in the video description. Thank you so much for watching you heroes, if you want to be a huge champion please subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.